Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Dr. Shurfud Halim. I'm a doctor for I'm a doctor who is preparing for USMLE Step 1. And I thought it would be a very good idea to put the information together and try to have some integration uh, between the different topics which will be very important in solving the step on questions. So this video is made for discussing the important concepts of early kiosis and also I'll try to integrate other concepts uh, into this disease. So the main or the main thing is the organism that causes early kiosis is called Ehrlichia chaffensis and it's one of the rickettsial organism. But remember the rickettsial organisms? So rickettsial organisms actually you can divide I mean on the basis of rash that there are some rickettsial diseases that are very commonly associated with rash such as rickettsia rickettsii which causes the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and one of the most important thing that you should always remember about Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is it causes rash on palm and soles along with some other diseases like coxsackie A and also secondary syphilis. So rickettsia rickettsii is one of the prototypical member of the rickettsia group. And one of the other rickettsia which is also commonly associated with rash is the typhus. So the typhus called typhus is actually caused by rickettsia pravazeki or rickettsia typhi. And one of the some of the diseases which are less commonly associated with a rash are one of them is ehrlichiosis. So it's caused by ehrlichia chaffensis, but still it's a rickettsia and still it can cause some rash. And uh, one of the other organism in this group is um, um, uh, Coxiella. So Coxiella is actually uh, not uh, totally rickettsia, but it's kind of related to rickettsia. So here you can see what you can see is you can see a monocyte and inside the monocyte you can see the marula of Ehrlichia. And that's actually pretty interesting. So there are very few cells or there are very few organisms that can actually live inside the mitochondria, um, inside the monocyte. And one of them is Ehrlichia. Can you tell me what are the other organisms that can also uh, reside inside the macrophage? And do you kind of think of one mechanism by which that the cell gains this ability of living inside the monocyte or something like macrophage? very good so the mechanism would be that if a cell or a microbe is inside the ma macrophage or monocyte and if it can inhibit the fusion of the phagosome and lysosome or if it can inhibit the function of the phagosome lysosome uh, unit it will be able to live inside the monocyte and one of the most classic organism which can do that is mycobacterium tuberculosis so as you can always remember that mycobacterium tuberculosis is an organism which causes tuberculosis and it goes inside your alveoli and taken up by alveolar macrophage then taken up to the lymph node where it actually multiplies inside the macrophage or inside the monocyte and it can you can actually see that inside the macrophage and one of the other classic organism which is also a mycobacterium which is called mycobacterium lepri which can also inside a cell and those two mycobacterium actually inhibits the function of the phagosome lysosome system uh, so let's move on so it's one of the organism that inhibit the phagosome lysosome fusion this helps it to survive in such cell and they actually form an inclusion and as you can see this looks like a berry so this is the berry like inclusion of the Ehrlichia inside the monocyte and some other organisms uh, as, as I have already mentioned one is Mycobacterium tuberculosis another one is Mycobacterium lepri which is the causative organism for leprosy and as you can remember there are two types uh, lepromatous and tubercular and in case of lepromatous the organism concentration is high in case of tuberculous leprosy organism concentration is low but in both diseases the organism actually invades or uh, damages the nerve tissue and actually that causes the uh, thickening of the nerve and hyperpigmentation also due to damage the skin and also loss of sensation due to damage of the nerve and one of the other organisms that can 
cell actually live inside cell which is a facultative intracellular organism it is legionella so as you can always remember legionella is a very important and very common cause of pneumonia and this pneumonia is commonly associated with hyponatremia and sometimes it's very severe okay so this is the basic integration that i wanted to share with you so as i have already mentioned it's one of the rickettsia which less commonly causes rash and the classic finding is monocyte with morula which is a berry like inclusion and it is carried by a common dog tick or lone star tick and the symptoms are common for all the rickettsia are fever headache and a rash and as like all rickettsia you will treat it with doxycycline actually i have given nvma 12 just uh, just uh, actually six hours earlier and i have got this question on my nvme that which drug should you use for ehrlichia or ehrlichosis so it was doxycycline so they have given this question in a way that which of the following mechanism of this drug has so as you can remember doxycycline is a tetracycline analog so it's like a tetracycline so it's in the tetracycline group and it inhibits the 30 years fibrosomal subunit okay and side effects profile are actually less than tetracycline and side effect and also the dosing is actually better and that's why we don't actually commonly use tetracycline we always tend to use doxycycline for the rickettsial infection but also along with doxycycline you can also use azithromycin for rickettsial infections too but the doxycycline is still remains as a fast line drug so that's all from me thanks for watching my video